Welcome to another episode of the Big Idea series. Uh, today we have with us Anirudh Berman, a fellow and associate research director at Carnegie India. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks, Karthik. Thank, Thank you. Today we are going to talk about the problem of land titling in India. There is a lot of talk happening in India regarding guaranteeing land titles. There is the Digital India Land Records Modernization Program, which seeks to categorize land titles. Many states like Maharashtra have proposed legislation to guarantee land titles. What's the current state of play? So, Karthik, thank you. Uh, I think land titling is an important problem and we've been talking about the problem of reforming land markets for a long time in India. Ever since the 1990s where we went through a liberalization process, uh, we've talked about the fact that land is one of those factor markets that needs more reform. And one of the issues people flag very frequently is that land titling is one important part of this. The issue is that titles in India are often not clear and the transactions in land get affected due to a problem of land titling. So like you said, there has been a long effort by the union government to ask states to digitize their land titles with the eventual goal of being able to guarantee land titles in India. So that's where we are at. The program has been on for a long time. And in this conversation, I want to make the point that we need to A, rethink this approach and also think about more market-based approaches to improving titles. Uh, what is the current status of the law uh, when it comes to uh, land titles? across the country? Sure. So let's start with uh, how land is actually regulated, how land titles are actually determined in India. So there are two different ways of thinking about land titles. There is one which we follow in India, which is a presumptive system. And then there is a system of guaranteeing land titles, which is called a conclusive system. So in a presumptive system, your title to the land can be challenged by another person if they can show a better sale deed or an agreement, which can then prove or disprove your title to the land. Right? So for example, you have a sale deed and I come along and I say that your sale deed is void because you are mentally incapable of entering into that agreement. right? And therefore, the sale deed that I entered into with the buyer of the land that you also happen to purchase is superior to yours. right? So which means that your title was only presumptive as long as I could not come across and challenge it. The moment I challenged it and proved that my document is superior, that becomes a presumptive, uh, that becomes the determining land title to the piece of property. In a conclusive system, the state guarantees the title, right? So if the, if your name is on the record in the revenue record in the land record, you will be the person who has the final title to that piece of property. I cannot come and show a sale deed to challenge your title, right? So the state is guaranteeing uh, your ownership of that piece of property. So these are the two systems. And in India, we have been following a presentive system for a long time. And the problem with that is that because it can be challenged, we have a lot of cases where people enter into sale deeds fraudulently. People don't have a title and they still sell the property. Uh, they'll make multiple sales of land or there'll be some defect in the title. So, for example, you claim that you have 200 square meters of land, but you actually only have 100, right? And you sell 200 square meters. And then you only find out about this fact after you've bought the property, right? So, those are the problems that happen in a presumptive land titling system. Do you think there is a very specific market failure uh, uh, that's happening here? So the main market failure is information asymmetry because you, in a presumptive titling system, if you do not know about the antecedents of the title to the property, there is a risk that you won't enter into an agreement that is legally valid and binding and you will suffer loss at a later date. Right, So there is a role for the state to actually create a system where that information asymmetry is reduced. Right, The question is, how do you actually create that system? Uh, people assume that the only other alternative is to create a guaranteed, uh, guaranteeing titling system right, or a conclusive titling system. 
The problem there is that when you guarantee titles, you then have to indemnify people if there is a loss even after the state is guaranteeing the title. Right. So suppose the same example that I just talked to you about. Suppose there was a record in the state land records that the title does in fact belong to you. Right. And I'm able to prove that it does not. Right. So the state will then have to indemnify you for the loss that you've suffered. Right. And that means that the state has to ensure that not only are the land records good, but they're actually indemnifying people for any problem with the land record. Right. Uh, so that's how they make or uh, try to solve the information asymmetry problem, right? Uh, so the market failure is information asymmetry, but the alternative given is always conclusive titling. I think as we have this discussion, we'll talk about the fact that that's not always the case. One of the aims of uh, these legislations is to reduce the litigation that happens uh, with uh, land titles. Uh, do you think they may achieve their desired effect? So I'm skeptical of the fact that they'll reduce litigation. I think it will generally, it may or may not have an impact on litigation. But to take a step back, right? So the claim is that because land titles are bad, we have a lot of litigation, right? But actually, there is no research that has shown that causal connection that uh, a f problem with the titles is leading to a lot of litigation. So let me give some other exam other causes that could be reasons for a lot of land litigation. For example, Indians have a very high <coughs> proportion of immovable property in their asset portfolios. And so everybody owns some land, every household. And even, in, even compared to other developing com uh, countries, we have a pretty high percentage of land in our asset portfolio. Right? So when you are actually transacting in the economy and if you are seeing the economy grow and you know there is much more dynamism, you would assume that at least some proportion of those transactions are related to land or immovable property, right? And then it's not it's not immediately obvious that all the litigation that's happening is because of land titling, right? It could be a contract failure, right? It could be something like squatting, right? It could be an inheritance-related issue. It could be stamp duty uh, evasions, right? Those are not title-related issues. Right. But what is a land title? A title basically says that if this is a hundred square meter piece of property, you are the owner or you are the tenant or you are the lessee of that piece of property. Right. And that you have XYZ rights which get to be recorded in the uh, land record system. That's all that it is doing. It is not in charge of solving for problems like not paying stamp duty or having a contract failure. Suppose you mortgage your land and you forget to or you don't pay back the loan, right? That dispute or that could eventually end up in court, but that's not a land title related dispute. Right? So I don't think there's a necessary causal connection between land litigation and land titles. There may be, but we have to investigate whether it actually exists and the degree to which it actually exists. My sense is we may be overestimating the scope of that problem. Right. Uh are there any uh, private solutions or private enforcement actions that would be possible to solve for the for the problem? Yeah, there are. And so let me compare and contrast this title guarantee system or a conclusive titling system to a private uh, system. Right? So a conclusive titling system has three or four components. One, it says that the record that the land revenue or the land record department will have is completely updated textually, right? So if you are the owner, it will have your exact name and it will have a chain of records saying you bought it from X and X bought it from Y and so on and so forth, right? So that will always be updated. And to buy a piece of property, theoretically, I should not even need to go and see that piece of property. Just by looking at the revenue record or the land record, I should be completely clear and sure that the record is completely up to date and accurate, right? So it's something called the mirror principle. And if that is incorrect, then you have to pay compensation or indemnify, uh, indemnify the person who suffers a loss. Right? So that's a conclusive titling system, which is guaranteed by the state. 
Now, one market-based alternative is something called title insurance. Uh, title insurance works very similarly, other than the fact that it's run by a private insurer. So, when I want to buy a piece of property, uh, I will buy title insurance for it. What will the title insurer do? They will go and do a due diligence on that piece of property. Right? They'll make sure that you are actually the seller, you are entitled to sell it. Right? If you say, I own 200 square meters, it's actually 200. If you say that no one else has any rights over that piece of land, that is actually the case. If there is a defect in the land record, they will go and correct it and clean it up. Okay. And they will then issue you a insurance product, which will guarantee that if you still suffer a loss, the insurance company will insure, insure you and indemnify you. Right. So that's a private alternative. And what that does is, if a title insurance company is doing this over a period of time, they will have their own private record of land titles right? over a period of time, which will become a complement to the state-run land record system. Right? So that's a market-based approach, and it's also a demand-based approach. So it will go where the demand is. Now, in India, we've launched title insurance products. IRDA launched it in around 2020 or 21. We have about five or six insurers who are currently doing this. The challenge is to reduce the premiums so that it can become much more accessible in the market. What would you rather have the state do when it comes to land titling programs? So one is, I would say that there are a basket of approaches that are available and the state should actually promote all of them. Right. So right now what we're seeing is a overemphasis on uh, digitization with the aim of guaranteeing land titles. Right? So, And we've been doing this for a long time. I think the first version of DILR MP started, I think, in 95 or 96. And it's 2024. We've not yet attained that goal. Some states have done better, the, better than others. But as a country, we are still not there. Right? So you need to enable different options in the market. Uh, title insurance is something that you should be doing much more carefully and proactively. Uh, the RERA Act mandated title insurance. I don't think you should mandate it, but it did. And in spite of the mandate, it's still not being adopted by developers across states. Right. So something needs to be done about how do you get at least the RERA registered projects to have title insurance for individuals. Right. And the third is, as you keep improving the state land records, the revenue records, the registration records, that data should be available to people who can develop API, uh, uh, develop platforms using those uh, databases to then create more customized services that that can actually do due diligence, right, and can give you a record or a title certificate, which is privately generated, but it it at least does part of the job. It does not legally guarantee you title but it gives you a report of what the status of that land is. And uh, we are already seeing two, three of these companies that are functioning in India who basically provide services to uh, lenders, banks, and even retail clients. And I think we should be enabling a lot more of that. I don't think there's a single magic bullet to solving the land titling problem. Uh, we should be doing all of these. And the last part is, even for the state-run DILR MP program, we should be focusing very clearly on where the value of the title is the highest. Right? So, for example, if you want to implement land titling or a guaranteed titling system, it would be far more useful to do it in an area where there are a lot of land transactions and high-value land transactions, rather than to do it in the middle of a village 300 kilometers from the capital, where you know people transact in land maybe once in every three years or five years or ten years, and the, the intensity of transactions is very little. So the benefit you get from investing in that area is very low. So you need a very clear sense of prioritization. Where do you want to go first? What is it that you want to focus on? I would say urban areas, peri-urban areas are the areas that you really need to focus on. And then you can look at solving the problem for the rest once you've done decently in these areas. Uh, Anirudh, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Lovely to hear from you. Thank, thank you. you.